Trap, trap, trap money, Benny. Buy you champagne, but she loves some honey. All right, boys, let us go over the Trados that we took today. Um, we took one dub and one L ski. So we'll go over the L first and then we'll talk about what we learned from today. All right, so to start off, the L that we took was an S&P trade where our bias was correct. The entry was just at the wrong time. Price wanted to go three points lower. Um, but if we look in here, if I'm looking at this overall on the daily, right? We're using that new kind of new strategy, right? Clickbait ass strategy. We got price coming down. All right. We break out of that. We come back down into this area from there, right? We know that we had broken out of this downtrend. We see this move up. Now we see this downtrend. What do we see? We break out of it. Now, what are we looking for? Areas of accumulation. Let me get rid of this for a sec. Areas of accumulation that could cause legs up. We got this area of accumulation right here. We got liquidity resting underneath here. Scale in, boom. All right, we saw liquidity get swept, break of structure to the upside, and I didn't enter off of this. I wanted to see this fair value gap get filled and then a reaction off of it. We saw it get filled, but a little bit too deep. Okay, and then we see one candle to the upside, but we can't even close back above there. We make a new high and then boom, then we get a closure above Boom, I enter right there off that one minute break of structure because we got a liquidity sweep, break of structure, boom, boom, boom. Third confluence off a third, off a second break of structure to the upside. Okay, stops underneath here. We end up getting stopped out. Boom, to the downside right here. And then price ended up wanting to fill right up into this 15 minute accumulation prior to this leg up right here. So. This is one of those ones where it's like, you know, you can't even be too disappointed with yourself on this because you knew damn well where price wanted to go, right? I even had that forecast tool saying that I wanted it to go here, 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 higher and higher, right? Our take profit one would have been hit, two probably on the way, all these on the way. Um, but that's just how the game goes sometimes. I w This is one that I'm not upset about whatsoever. Yesterday... I um, was upset about taking that GJ trade without waiting for a third confirmation. This one, not upset about it because I waited for all my rules. I knew I wanted to go long today. We got a sweep of liquidity. We got a break of structure of the upside. We had one reaction. I said, nah, nah, that wasn't enough. I either wanted it to close above here or give me something more. We have this fair value gap. We come in, not enough. We make a new high. Then we get a break of structure of the upside. That was enough for me. Stops underneath here. We had a break of structure here, then another break of structure. That was enough for me. Price just wasn't feeling it. Wanted to move down further into this accumulation area, into this prior to this massive leg on up. All right. And then from there, we seen boom, break of structure, fill of this fair value gap and rallies to the upside. So that was, that was kind of one where it's like, if this happens to you, if this happens to you, you should not be, you shouldn't be disappointed when something like this happens because then it's like, okay, it was purely just like, you knew, you knew where price wanted to go. You just couldn't find a, a good execution. You know, like we got stopped out by 2.7 points. Right, that's nothing to be upset about, especially when we knew where price wanted to go in the first place. That's just something where we sit there, say, all right, look, we, we got to reevaluate, figure out where, you know, like if we should have waited for, you know, maybe this whole area of accumulation to get hit, maybe this was higher confluence than just this liquidity sweep, right? There's a couple things that you can kind of go over there, talk to yourself, journal, back test, whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you can't really be too upset with knowing the knowing where price wanted to go and just not fully executing. All right, so that's the S&P. Now let's move over to GU here. Now let me tell you, bro, this trade made me want to murder someone, okay? Um, so if we look in here, this was a bit of a riskier trade. 
But we had this right here, right? This leg down prior to this big dick up, right? This dick up, broke out of this, okay? Came back down into this consolidation area right here. We see on the 15 minute, obvious order block, right? Leg down prior to big extensions up. Then we see price revisit this area, right? We see chop, 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 chop. But then what do we see? We see this big extension breaking out of these highs, these highs down here, this high right here, and breaking above this high, just barely, barely closing above this high. So from there, I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to be looking for longs on this thing. I want to see if I can find long positions, okay? I said, all right, we have this order block right here because we swept out these London lows prior to New York, or sorry, right after New York opened. We swept out these London lows, caused that extension up. I kind of highlighted this order block right here. And I was saying, look, I want to see some sort of reaction based off that. Scale it into the one minute. All right. I entered right on over here. Okay. Scale it into the one minute. We see price fill in this fair value gap and we just see it chop forward. That really wasn't enough for me. So I waited. We see price come down again, take out these lows. Still wasn't enough. We see price chop up, chop up, come down. And then to me, this was enough. It honestly really wasn't. The execution on this could have been better. It could have been right up here. Yes, it probably would have given us a worse risk to award, but that's something that like, even though you win a trade, right? We hit take profit one and I ended up being able to cover the loss that I took today on the S and P because for some reason, like, I don't know, just like how I risk, I always risk less on the S and P trades. Um, I don't know why that's just, <laughs> that's just how I do it. I, I end up risking more on Forex trades for the most part. Um, but we see price come down here, sweep out these lows, rally higher, but then get like, this was such a minor break of structure. And that's what we took it off of with stops, like four pips underneath the, this sweep down here. Cause if it, comes back down underneath this sweep it would invalidate it and for me this is how I would have liked to play this and I would have liked for this huge consolidation to get broken out of and then enter in on like the retest of it which would be right here and then maybe then I could have had a better entry so what I would have liked to do would have been just sit wait, 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 while this is just chopping up, chopping up. And then boom, we see this breakout, very obvious volume to the upside. Let me move this over a little bit. Very obvious volume to the upside. And then we see price come in here, retest this area. And that should be like enough for me. And then just a simple reaction off of that. Boom, five minute candle to the upside. That should be enough for me to be able to go long. And then from there, I could put my stop underneath this because if you see here, this is that downward move that was able to fill all these orders, right? This leg down is what caused that big leg up. So we're assuming that, hey, this is that price range where orders got filled. Maybe we even put it underneath here or just like a couple of pips below here. This is at 10, okay, cool. Yeah, drop it under here, an extra two pips for comfort, okay. And then you can have, oops. And then you could have like a one-to-one -one at TP1. If that, you know, maybe you got to move it up a little bit to one-to-one -one right here um, and get a, you know, relatively similar, similar risk to reward. We're coming into this little accumulation area here right, right now. Um, but that would be like the better trade for the day if you ask me. And like, if I'm being honest, this isn't even that like money of a trade because if we look at this on a higher, higher time frame, like I know you guys are gonna get on my head, but this is what I saw for the day. Um, you know, like on a higher, higher time frame, this thing's in a downtrend. If we go into the four hour, this thing's in a downtrend. I was really banking off of this little mini breakout of this mini downtrend. See how we were trending down on the 15? Prominent high right here, prominent high right here relatively prominent highs within here. I was banking off of this prominent high getting broken above and then this being a retracement at least up until here, at least filling like maybe all the way up until this accumulation that caused this original leg on down. So that's kind of what I was going off of. This isn't necessarily like 
a trade that I would always want to take, um, but it is one that I took today. Would, like, in hindsight, would I want to take that type of trade again? Probably not, um, because, again, I was stuck in drawdown and just sitting in this trade for, bro, I want to say, like, two, uh, two and a half hours before we got this extension up here. Or not two and a half hours, like, two hours or, like, an hour, 30 minutes before we got this extension up. And in reality, I could have just, I could have literally just logged off um, the charts and not have taken this and still been equally satisfied with my day. Like this trade, even though we hit take profit and even though I covered for the loss that I took on the S&P, I was more satisfied with my bias on the S&P than the trade, that, than the winning trade that I took on GU. And that's something that you guys need to get used to doing is like being able to see like, look, even though I lost this trade, I still knew where price wanted to go, right? Like I lost this, but hey, look, like I still had these areas marked out. I still knew that price wanted to move up for the day or at least once it came down into these areas, I didn't do anything wrong besides the execution part. And that's the hardest part in trading is the execution and, and stop loss. But bias, that's, that's something that, you know, if you can get right, then you should be a profitable trader because executions you'll hit and you'll miss sometimes. But if you can get the bias down every single day and know, you know, like where price might want to go for the day or at least off of an area, then that's how you're, you're going to be a profitable trader. So I was honestly more satisfied with my bias and my analysis on the S&P compared to GU where I entered kind of off very sloppy price action. Um, you know, you could honestly say that this was a bad entry because we hadn't even had like much of a breakout of this consolidation, right? We were in this consolidation for a long, long time prior to this breakout. Who knows? This thing could have, you know, spiked down and just continued this downtrend. And if I had used good analysis, I technically shouldn't have even been in this trade if it did want to spike down, right? And if it did spike down, then I wouldn't have lost this trade. But if it did, then I would have, you know, I would have lost. Um, so it's, it's like small things like that, being able to keep yourself in check. Like, even though I hit take profit on this, was this an overall good trade? Not necessarily. The better trade would have been waiting for this to get broken out of, waiting for this to come back down into this fair value gap, waiting for a reaction to the upside, right? Because this is that accumulation. We see the leg up from it. We see the revisit of this fair value gap. We see the revisit of the accumulation. We see the reaction off of it. This is the trade. This is the one right here, right here off this candlestick. That's what we wanted en want to enter off of. But we entered down here and yes, it might have given us a better risk to reward, but still it's like understanding that that probably wasn't the best trade to take during that time. All right. So there's a little lesson for y'all today. Hopefully you guys appreciated this, um, you know, slowly but steadily trying to make the bread back. Hey, make sure you don't trade tomorrow or the following day. We have CPI tomorrow. We got PPI on Thursday and we got heavy news on Friday. If y'all haven't seen, we got heavy news on Friday. We got news an hour before market open, 15 minutes before market open and 30 minutes into market open. I might not trade for the rest of this week, bro. Um, you know, I got to got to stay, stay active, see what price wants to do. I'll still be checking on the charts because I have noticed like if like, yes, the start of this week wasn't necessarily the best. And even today wasn't necessarily the best trading day. But since I've been back in Puerto Rico and back on my routine, I've been killing it on the charts and killing it with my trading. And that's something that it is. I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know, like when you're not traveling, when you're more focused on your trading and on your on your work itself, like you're going to perform a lot better. Um, and you know, over the past three weeks, I've just been, you know, fucking killing the market, stealing all of the bread from it. Um, and today's pretty, or this week's a pretty heavy news week. So it doesn't really surprise me that the performance hasn't been as great as those past three weeks have been, but still, I'm, I'm glad that I was able to get a win in today, even though it wasn't obviously the best trade, but this is still something to learn from. So that being said, I appreciate y'all. Um, another solid day in the books. Um, I look forward to talking to y'all later. Peace out.